Hi there, this is uh, a multi-part series of doing electrical etching at home. The equipment that you may or may not want to get, or may want to get, and the things that you absolutely need to have. And um, I like frugal, so I like being able to do as much as I possibly can with the uh, least expensive route to do it, especially if I'm not sure if I'm going to like it or not. Um, for the type of electro etching that I'm doing, this setup is absolutely perfect. Um, you can probably put together a kit for mm, under $30, I'm going to say. Um, and that's including your uh, electrical etching rectifier. You are going to need this. This is a must have. So basically this is a charger of some sort. I'm not sure what it was used for. I looked at an old cell phone charger or maybe it was a, um, a charger for uh, an answering machine. I have no idea. Anyways, these are floating around in, in secondhand stores or consignment stores for a dime a dozen. Literally, I'm not joking. Uh, they're cheap. You can pick these up anywhere. Don't spend any money on buying a new one or destroying one that you're actually using. Just go and, and find something that's been discarded. Um, so this is an 18 volt, 1 amp. I um, got the information off the back. So there it is, 18 uh, equals 1 amp. This I find is probably the best uh, amperage for etching. It gives a nice slow, steady etch. Uh, I have built electrical etchers out of uh, a series of four AA batteries and that created a very aggressive etch. Like within 20 minutes I had eaten through the, uh, the, the metal. Um, so if you're going to be babysitting something uh, continuously, you might want to go that route. It's very easy to build. Just uh, get it from Radio Shack, the little uh, four series of AA batteries and then hook up your uh, leads to that. So when you get one of these you're going to snip off the end that has the male or female uh, plug-in adapter and then you're going to stick on two alligator clips and then uh, seal them off with some uh, whatever these heat shrink tape seal stuff whatever. Um, if you have a voltmeter, great, use that. You can determine which is your hot and which is your ground. Um, but it's also easy to tell. The hot wire has a white um, marking on it, like either a straight line or a, 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 a blocked or um, uh, in, an interrupted line, white line, compared to this one here, which has nothing. So this is your ground and this is your wire that attaches to your your piece so um, just have a look and uh, and see and uh, you'll see what I mean when you get your little unit or even look at any other unit you have out there there's always going to be something indicating uh, which is hot and which is neutral this is a little fun thing to have but not a necessity it's a magnetic stir um, it's a gadget. I'm not sure if it really does any good or not. Um, I use it, but I don't know. Sometimes I don't. Most of the times I don't. You will need some, these are actually from uh, the food service industry. You could, I picked mine up from the wholesale club or a superstore in Canada. Uh, anywhere where they sell steam trays with these little storage containers. They are, um, Made in China, they're cheap, and they're steel. Needs to be steel, can't be aluminum, can't be glass, can't be plastic. You need to have steel, metal. And you can get it in a variety of sizes. I have these for doing small pieces. I have this one marked for fine silver, this one marked for argentium and sterling silver, and this one is for copper and brass. So you can use one pan for all, but I like keeping them separate. This is my one 
one for all pen and this is for doing a bracelet blank or some other larger pieces that won't fit into these little containers. So the smaller the container, the less fluid you need, the bigger the container, you're going to need a little bit more fluid. Another absolute must have are your chemicals. So I used to use ferric chloride and ferric nitrate and I hate these things. These are absolutely gross and they're hazardous for the environment. You need to dispose of them through hazmat. Um, do not dump them down the drain. Do not dump them in your garden. This stuff can only be used for so long before it becomes saturated. You can see this one with the copper etching is, is fairly saturated with the sediment in there. Uh, the one with the silver, not so bad. But uh, I am not using this anymore and I'm actually just waiting for the hazardous materials disposal team to come back to our area and I'm going to get rid of this stuff because I don't want it. Next we have copper sulfate and copper nitrate. Both environmentally friendly and you use this stuff over and over and over and over again. Um, in fact, here is what it looks like. So this is copper nitrate. I bought this stuff years ago and I've already made uh, a pile of these baths here for, for friends as well, which they use over and over and over again. And this is going to last me a lifetime. This is probably going to last me more than my lifetime. But so the crystals are like this, you dissolve them in a, in a ratio and that'll all be, um, I'll talk about all of the ratios that you need to, to use. Um, but this is the way to go for, for etching. And this is strictly for electro etching that it's used for. So copper sulfate for copper, copper nitrate for sterling silver. And then you have, um, this is silver nitrate vault. <laughs> I keep it in the dark because it, once the solution is made, it should be, uh, kept in, in the dark. And um, a silver nitrate is actually used medically. They use it, I think, for uh, stopping nosebleeds, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, that's my recollection of it. Anyways, I don't use the silver nitrate for fine silver very much because I don't etch on fine silver. And so these solutions are poured into the vessel. So you fill up your vessel with the copper, whichever, copper nitrate or copper sulfate and then your piece gets suspended in the bucket and then once you're done etching you filter this back into here and uh, you'll you'll be left with some uh, etching slag so the etching slag looks like this and you can see it almost looks like dried metal clay and i'm betting anything that um, that's what they make uh, precious metal clay out of. You can see there's some some um, coppery looking particles and that is fr I've uh, mixed um, Argentian sterling silver uh, etching slag and uh, sterling silver etching slag in here. I have not mixed copper slag in here. The copper slag gets disposed of adhering to the the pans here. You can see on this one here, there's a little bit of copper still adhering. So yeah, you can reclaim your copper if you want. You get nice pure copper. Uh, okay, so those are your chemicals, your containers, and your unit. So um, chemicals, unit, containers, must have. Filters, if you want to reuse your solutions over and over and over and over again, filter them, and then um, you can uh, reuse them over and over again. Otherwise, if you end up dumping them, I wouldn't do that because, I mean, this is environmentally friendly electro etching, and uh, the whole purpose of it is uh, basically reuse and recycle, right? So let's do that. Get some paper filters and uh, re-filter it through there, and then get a little cone um, funnel you put your filter in there and I'm going to show you all that stuff to what's, what you're going to do. 
gloves don't really need them but they're there if you want them and they're actually all stained from the ferric chloride and ferric nitrate the bad stuff that you don't want to use anymore and that's actually what happens to your hands it gets stained that color if you happen to stick your hands in there without gloving up but with the copper sulfate copper nitrate no problems at all you also need to have a heat source I have a griddle which is completely unnecessary but I like heating the piece up from the bottom and the top and I figure it just heats it up enough so that it the the um, transparency or the uh, laser photo paper or the uh, P and press and peel paper uh, adheres a bit better because it melts the the toner and the, the toner is what acts as the resist on the um, on the silver for the etching uh, so you need to have a little iron make sure that it's either got no steam or so like no no water uh, container for steam or you have the steam feature shut off so this is a completely dry iron and then you'll need to have a burnisher. So either one of your uh, existing steel burnishers or this is an agate burnisher. Um, agates, agate burnishers don't scratch apparently as much or as badly. And um, yeah, they, they work fine. But you can get away with just a steel burnisher. And then you need to have some chopsticks. And the chopsticks are used with the electrode which is adhered to your piece I'm just going to show you here so this is adhered to the back of the piece and then you're going to be using I like the red tuck tape over there and then that gets taped at the back and then it will also um, get wrapped around the sides a little bit just to protect the sides from being etched because Anywhere there's no resist is where it gets etched. So uh, you can also apply some nail polish. You can apply um, uh, some black Sharpie would work or red Sharpie. Um, but I find using the red tuck tape and then uh, putting down, I'll show you how to do all that. I'm not going to go into any big explanation. So anyways, so that gets attached to the back of that. This goes through your chopstick like that okay if you can visualize that and then this gets hung in suspension in the fluid bath obviously once it's taped it's going to be a lot easier to visualize that so it's basically hanging like that um, about a half an inch above the bottom or so yeah like a finger finger width away okay so what happens then is that your etching unit this thing here so the red electrode hooks on or the red lead hooks on to the electrode this hooks onto ground. The copper nitrate, copper sulfate acts as a catalytic solution. And then um, what it does is it draws the um, metal away from where there's no resist and then it plates it onto the pan. So you'll end up with a copper sheet and etching slag at the same time so copper and uh, silver slag um, if you're doing copper then you'll only just end up with a copper um, copper sheet on the bottom and that you can actually peel away it, it's a very thin um, thin layer of uh, plated copper if you reverse it you will actually electroplate your piece with copper so it'll draw the copper out of the solution and then end up copper plating your piece and that's something that you either do want to do or you don't want to do but anyways uh i don't so i don't um i don't reverse it okay so again i'm going to go into a whole bunch of detail 
And then in here, there's just a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. Resist. You will also need to have some fine steel wool, and that's basically for removing the the resist from your piece once you've finished uh, etching it, so that you can end up with something that looks like that. Okay, um, I think that's about it for this session. Next, we will be talking about the papers. Okay, so the next thing we're going to be looking at is your uh, transfer papers for transferring your image, that being this little owl, onto your silver, which is right here. So, you have your sheet of silver, you have your image, and you're going to transfer it over. So what do you use? So there are three things that you can use. Um, all three require a laser copy, like a photo printer or like a laser printer or a laser photocopying machine. You need to have uh, your image and I just download the images off of, um, off of the internet and then uh, go into uh, GIMP or into Inkscape and convert them into monotone images. That's really important. You do not want to have a grayscale image. If you have a grayscale image where it is um, uh, the lighter shades of black, so gray, uh, it'll etch fast, uh, faster than the other uh, purely black uh, areas would be. So you want pure monotone uh, black and white images. Now, um, so the, you can also use uh, these Lumicolor permanent markers. They work fine if you want to hand draw. I find hand drawing really tedious and I'm not that great of an artist either. Um, but they're good for covering up areas where you might not have gotten a complete transfer of the, the uh, laser toner onto your piece. So what do you use here? We're going to use either color laser photo supreme and it has to be laser paper. Do not use other photo paper like for inkjet. You need to use color laser photo supreme. I picked up a hundred for about $20 um, and I usually buy them on sale and I get them a little bit cheaper. And these are the equivalent to a proprietary brand, which I'm not mentioning here. Um, but you get uh, five sheets for $12.95. Um, so anyways, save yourself a whole pile of money because you will go through this stuff a lot. You will go through a lot of paper if you use paper. Um, and this will last you probably, a, well, it'll last you a long time. Let's just say that. Um, and especially if you don't like the image and then you go, oh shoot, I really don't like the image or I want one whole sheet of images or I want to get a whole bunch of different images onto a sheet then this is your best bet. Do not spend, please, 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 do not spend $12.95 for five sheets of this. It's ridiculous. And it makes me mad when uh, people try and inflate what things are really worth because they think people actually need it when they don't. So save yourself the money and uh, just buy some photo paper because when you see my video and you do the comparison video of the site where they're uh, using their uh, etching paper, which I won't mention any names, you'll see it's exactly the same thing. It, the paper rolls off the back of the, uh, the metal and then you're left with, you know, a little bit of cloudy surface. Identical. All right. Next is... Um, laser transparencies a little bit more expensive i think i paid about 50 dollars for 50 of them so it works out to be about a dollar they're a little bit more pricey they work quite well as well and the nice thing is you can actually see where your 
um, image is on the um, on the metal and the last is um, probably one of the better because this is actually meant for for etching and this is um, the electricians the electronics people use these for making circuit boards um, this I paid about $39 for 20 sheets so a uh, little bit more expensive but it works really well and I don't use a whole lot of this I use this for um, when I have a design that I absolutely love 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 and want to replicate very well um, this works good so those are your papers again this is your best one best 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 a little bit more expensive than everybody else uh, this is your next best bet and uh, I'm also talking in terms of uh, removing it from the back of the piece. Uh, when I use the laser photo supreme or what other people would be using is that proprietary brand of uh, color laser photo paper because let's admit it folks that's exactly what it is. You end up having to wear it off like the backing the paper backing with your thumb and when I was doing a lot of etching before I realized that you can use photo trans or the transparencies and the press and peel transfer film, um, I was almost getting blisters on my thumb from having to rub that uh, that paper backing off of there, and it's uh, it's not nice. So this is my last choice, absolutely last choice, and these are my first top two choices here. This is good for if you want to try something out and see if you actually like a design and see how it how it etches. But once you get your designs figured out and you go, oh, I want to replicate that, go with um, go with the higher end stuff. Um, okay, so we talked about the papers, and here is my container. So I have downloaded piles and piles of piles of images that I've already um, adapted for etching. So that means that they're abs absolutely uh, ready to etch.